Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the October Cabinet meeting. Uh, could I have apologies for absence, please, Laura? No apologies. Thank you. Any declarations of interest? No. Uh, minutes of the uh, meeting held on the 10th of July. Could our uh, proposal, please, to accept those minutes? Proposal. Right, matter. Yeah. Yeah, proposal. Councillor Major proposed, seconder. Councillor Moore. All those in favour? Thank you very much. Uh, there are no opposition group leader questions tonight and no citizens questions, so we'll go straight on to uh, item six on the agenda, which is a proposal for the Abbey Road site. Councillor Edivine. Uh Thank you, uh, Councillor Robinson. I'd like to uh, make this proposal, um, and it's to do with the Abbey Road site, as Councillor Robin has set, Robinson has said. It's the first phase of realising our ambition to forget, vacate Abbey Road as a depot and make it available for housing, including up at least 30% affordable housing. Abbey Road, it's worth noting, is not included in Local Plan Part 2 because it's a designated brownfield site, but it does contribute to the five-year housing supply and overall target. To just go over the recommendation, it is that officers undertake work to bring forward an outline planning application along with a design code. Dependent on the planning permission being granted and, um, is to then authorise the Deputy Chief Executive to market the site for disposal with the benefit of planning permission. And then finally, the Cabinet requests a follow-up report to the marketing exercise, including other options to consider with regard to the future development of the site. So none of this is committing us to any 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 form of action. Um, so it's not a permission to dispose of the site, but a step to ensure that due consideration is given to getting the best out of the site when disposal happens. We have a, a £300,000 grant from Homes England, and that can be used to facilitate the, the bringing forward of the plans for the disposal of the site and, and, and bringing... And, and putting the planning application together. It's a key site in West Bridgeford, and by take, taking the steps recommended in the report, we can ensure that we control the planning application and the proposals therein. And at a future date, as a council, we can then decide how best to deliver the proposals, either through sale of the land with planning or development of the site itself, with or without a joint venture partner. So, as I say, this is the first step, and I'd like to uh, recommend, the, propose that we adopt the recommendation in paragraph two, as I've set out. Thank you. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Mason. Thank you. Um, I think this report sets out a vision for, and a future for the site. Um, it also, as has been said, assists the five-year housing land supply. Um, and the site is underused as well. But it also uh, links to some of our priorities and um, it will support the delivery of the council's corporate priorities by delivering economic growth. And it will ensure sustainable, prosperous and thriving local economy. Also, uh, uh, apart from that, it, it maintains and enhances our residents' quality of life in the area, I believe. So after, all, after a few years of looking at this, I'm really pleased that this has come forward. Thank you. Thank you. And I second the recommendation. Thank you. <clears throat> I think just two points just to note on here on the 5.1 is that the funding we received of 300k is about releasing the land for housing by March 2020. Yeah. And as a phrase actually says is that we could actually uh, lose that funding if we do delay it too long so I think that's an important time scale that we must be worked to because in fact I think we have Miss Mary we've, we've actually got the funding already haven't we it's actually with us uh, so I think that's very important as a timeline in there the other thing which I think is very important is on 6.2 where it talks about that um, it is actually a brownfield site so he's already deemed to be a developable, developable site for housing which again is very important in the context obviously we've got the local plan 2 going through so there's obviously a lot of green lights there, timelines that's really pointing the way forward. So uh, this is an important step, uh, and I think it's one that we we should support to move this uh, this site forward. 
Any other comments or questions on this with that? Councillor Upton. Just briefly to say that anything that supports the five-year land supply is very welcome by me. And you've made the point about the Home England's grant, so fair enough with that one. And finally, I just think the current use, the current land use, is not appropriate for that mm. residential area. It may yeah. have been years ago, but with yeah. its intensive use now, not appropriate. No, absolutely, so sir. Green it, lights everywhere. It's that. a good point, and obviously, as you say, that is a, a, diff a different work stream that we work on, which uh, obviously is very important if we, we're going to free this site up. So, proposed by Councillor Edivine, seconded by Councillor Mason. All those in favour of supporting the recommendations based on page nine. That's unanimous. Thank you. So if we move now on to item seven, which is a report of the five-year housing supply in Rushcliffe. Uh, it's actually an agenda, uh, agenda supplement that we actually have there. So Councillor Upton. Continuing the theme of the five-year housing supply, which I seem to be... Uh, seamlessly. <laughs> seamlessly and mentioning an awful lot lately. But however, here we go. I mean, this report does get information on our current five-year housing supply position, as it says. But it does give further information uh, to the motion that was recently agreed at full council. Uh, and that's in Appendix 3 of the report uh, concerning this issue and the impact it's having on planning appeals. Uh, the report describes in some detail the actions that this council has been uh, taking to try and deliver our six strategic housing sites. And in particular, it highlights the difficulties and the obstacles in achieving the targeted housing delivery of the 13,000 odd homes by 2028. The reasons for our lack of a five-year housing land supply are detailed and complex, and they're in the report. But two sites in particular, namely Fair and Pastures or Clifton, and the Gamston strategic site are proving especially difficult to resolve. The city and county councils have significant land holdings in these two strategic sites. And at Gamston, despite this council's best endeavours, both these councils have, in our opinion, delayed the delivery of this site with the associated negative impact on our housing land supply figure. We currently cannot demonstrate a five-year land supply we actually have 3.1 and are reviewing it. But um, as a result, as I say, we're losing the planning appeals and, and development is being approved where neither the local parish council or indeed ourselves want it. Indeed, our recently submitted local plan part two seeks to increase the housing numbers in several key settlements, Radcliffe, Crockwell Bishop, East Bridgeford, etc., to try and address our current shortfall in our housing delivery. And you can link that back to the, the comments of the Gamston and, and the Clifton Pastures site. Um, <coughs> to try and resolve our five-year <coughs> land supply issue, this report seeks Cabinet's endorsement for a review of Rushcliffe's current housing target through the appropriate channels and a continued pressure to progress the Gamston strategic site. In summary, we have a major problem with not having a five-year housing land supply. Apart from not delivering much needed housing, we are losing the planning appeals because of it and having developments in communities where it's not appropriate and frankly not welcome. Five-year problem is not being helped by the slow progress at two of our large housing sites, Fairham and, as I say, Gamston, and the city and county councils are not being sufficiently proactive, in our opinion, to help develop these sites. We need more support from government to help us move forward. And so it brings me to the recommendation two on, on that first page. I'll read it. Further to the agreed full council motion on the 27th of September 2018, it is recommended that Cabinet A instruct the Chief Executive to facilitate the ongoing lobbying of central government to raise the impact of the lack of delivery of key strategic sites is having on Rushcliffe communities and the Council's ability to achieve the Local Plan Part 1 in accordance with the agreed full Council motion, and B, instructs the Chief Executive to take the necessary actions to facilitate the delivery, and there should be the word of, I suspect, the, of the Gamston strategic allocation in whole or part. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Upton. Do I have a second, please? Councillor Edwin. Yeah. I'd like to second the proposal. Um, Councillor Upton has summarised it perfectly. 
I think we all know that as a council we're committed to meet, meeting the government's imposed target, but we only give permission, we don't build houses. If landowners don't bring forward the sites and development doesn't happen when we've granted permission, then we, we should not be penalised. It was clear from the full council debate that all councillors support the frustration of not having developments where we want them, so I support the recommendation and I'm happy to second it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Any other comments about this paper? Councillor Mason. Thank you. On, on this particular paper, I was pleased to see about the Gamston and the strategic allocation because that is crucial to what we want to do in the future and it's crucial for our residents too. I know that I am I'm nearby it, but I, the residents do um, understand and accept that if this doesn't go ahead, we are vulnerable in our villages around Rushcliffe. And so I'm really pleased to see that uh, necessary actions to facilitate the delivery of it. Thank you. I think a useful part of the uh, agenda is the impact. And this is the on page nine. And you'll see there the table of all the appeals and the outcomes. Because that effectively is, is what happens. Uh, it's not solely about the actual housing supply it's the impact of not actually providing the supply itself and i think that uh, that table perfectly summarizes really where the impact and the actual places and you'll see there right from uh, say straggle thought right to southern bonnington or, or basically all over the borough and that's just to date and we'll see that uh, i'm sure uh carrying on as, as we actually go forward now in terms of moving forward and, and that's what the government's got to realise and our fellow public sector partners have got to realise that uh, we have a plan, we can't deliver it, hence this is what uh, we'll go through there. So, Okay, Councillor Moore. Thank you. I, I sit as chairman of uh, Eastleigh Growth Board and I can confirm that the uh, problems that they're particularly having in Eastleigh because we can't fulfil our five-year figure um, the developers are letting rip around that area because it's not green belt. And the growth board was set up really to facilitate growth, but in really at the moment we are firefighting because the facilities, schools, uh, water, sewerage, all the various things like that are not keeping up with unplanned growth. It, we are a planning authority. We don't build houses, as, as has been said many times. But it is very important that if you have proper plan growth, you can deal with it. What's happening in East League? They've had a 35% increase in houses in the last three years. They've got unplanned growth, and there are a lot of consequences going with it. So, I, you know, I'm very much in favour of the recommendation. Thank you. So, proposed by Councillor Upton, second by Councillor Edwin. Oh, sorry, Councillor, yes, it was Councillor Edwin, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah sorry, I beg your pardon, Councillor Edwin. All those in favour? Carried uh, unanimously. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item eight, which is the revenue capital budget monitoring for period four. Councillor Moore. Yeah, thank you very much. This is, uh, revenue, as, as has been said, revenue capital update for our first quarter of this year. And as I say, it is just an update to everybody to say where we're going. This report has been discussed at corporate governance and there were no significant issues pointed out at, gov uh, at corporate governance. <clears throat> the revenue budget is broadly on target. We have a small variance of 63,000, which is nothing to, at this stage to worry about. On Appendix B, it highlights the main variances. I've just picked out a couple uh, adverse and positive ones for you. The adverse ones, the first one is Streetwise, where they've got increased costs of £56,000, and that's linked primarily to an increase in fly tipping. And for me and my ward and those of us who've got wards out in the rural part of Rushcliffe, this is the consequences of the county closing Langer tip. We said it would happen. It's happened. We've now, we've now landed an extra £56,000 worth of extra costs. We've got some transformation costs, increase of 85000 These are mainly short-term costs relating to our assets investment. On the positive side, and this 
probably goes against what's been saying, but we have had a lot of planning applications coming in. Um, whilst they are causing problems and issues for us, they've actually generated an extra income of £75,000, which wearing my finance hat, I'm very grateful for, but I'm aware that this is giving the planning department certain headaches. The green waste uh, side is uh, doing extremely well, and uh, we've generated an extra £40,000 worth of income. Just looking at the positive variances and negatives, we, we come out good for £83,000 on that. So going forward, uh, we are looking to invest in schemes in the borough based on our growth strategy. As you know, we've been invested both in the borough and outside the borough. Uh, we're anticipating some timing delays on income earned on our assets, so we're going to have to be factoring this into the budget. Capital spend, which I usually report this time of year, has its usual phasing delays, and that relates to my previous comments. And again, the future of the depot, as has been mentioned, does cause capital spending to be rephased, for want of a better word. As soon as, soon as that gets going, the, more, the sooner we'll be able to spend the budget of capital on it. Overall, the first quarter shows that the financial position in, in Rushcliffe is relatively stable. As Cabinet Member for Finance, I'm happy the officers are showing due diligence with regards to the Council finances. I'm happy to move the recommendation. I will read it. It's recommended at the Cabinet note the projected revenue position for the year with a minor 0.6% minor variation, 63,000 in the revenue position due to the expected business rates position, and B, the capital underspend of 10.237 million as a result of the capital scheme rephasing and projected savings. As I say, I'm happy to recommend that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mason. Thank you. Um, I find this report quite positive. I think it shows that uh, there are financial opportunities as well as challenges. And uh, I think it will appear that we will be in a good position for both, for both the opportunities as well as the challenges that we can face over the next few months. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Any other comments? No. Okay, so uh, proposed by Councillor Moore, seconded by uh, Councillor Mason. The recommendations are on page 15. All those in favour? Thank you very much. That's carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to the uh, last part of the uh, agenda is item nine, the business rates pilot. Uh, Councillor Morgan. Thank you. This is, um, again, another update, a bit like the last one. It is an update because this one is work in progress. Um, this is an update on our bid for pilot status in the country to retain 75% of, of our business rates. This is a combined application between the seven districts, the county, the city and the fire authority, and could, and I repeat the word could, if successful, benefit the combined application by up to £10 million. The application was submitted on the 25th of September. We believe there's something like 30 applications, and whilst we're optimistic, we're also realistic that only a maximum of 10 applications will be successful. A decision is expected early December, along with the draft financial settlement. If successful, the gain will be moved forward and will be part of the medium-term financial strategy. Any gain will be used for financial stability and for investment in economic development. Now, I know there was a very short timetable on this, and I know a lot of work has gone into this to get the bid in on time and not just in Rushcliffe, but across the board throughout the county. So I'm very grateful to the officers that this bid was put in in time, and I do hope it is successful. It's quite a big recommendation. I'll, I'm going to read it to you. It's recommended that the Cabinet A supports the agreement entered into with the seven district borough councils, Nottingham City Council, Nottinghamshire and City of Nottingham Fire and Rescue Authority, to progress the bid to become a business rates retention pilot for... 2019-20. B, there is delegated authority for the chief executive and the executive manager, finance and corporate services to progress the final proposal if the application is successful. And C, 
Progress regarding the bid is reported through the Councillor's Medium Term Financial Strategy 2019 to all councillors. As I say, I, I recommend that. Thank you. Uh, I have a seconder. Councillor Upton. Very pleased to second and support the uh, recommendation to enter into an agreement with other councils to bid to become a business rates retention pilot. From my personal experience, it can be very beneficial to take part in a pilot project. And as it says in the report, that this bid has a, a very low risk. So very pleased to second it. Thank you. Lovely. Okay. Any other comments? So all those in favour of the motion proposed by Councillor Moore, second by Councillor Upton. It's carried unanimously. So that concludes the items on the agenda, so I officially declare the uh, meeting closed. Thank you.